Well, good evening and welcome to our uh, Wednesday evening session from our series, Facing Down Fear. Uh, tonight, uh, we are uh, focused on a, a passage we're entitling, What to Do When You Don't Know What to Do. And it raises the question, how do we respond in those moments where, honestly, we, we just don't know what to do? Uh, what do you do when you've lost your job? or when a diagnosis says you have a deadly disease? What do you do when your family is falling apart or has been even torn from you? What do you do if your business has failed? What, what do you do when you find out that your spouse has been lying to you or has had an affair or is addicted to porn pornography? What do you do when you've just had somebody sue you in court or or the IRS has announced it's auditing you? What do you do when you can't pay the payments on your house and the mortgage company takes it over? What do you do when it looks like there's nothing you can do to solve the problems that you're facing? What do you do when you don't know what to do? Well, in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, King Jehoshaphat uh, was facing a similar decision. There was a report of an, an armies, a coalition of armies attacking them and coming their direction. And so Jehoshaphat makes a decision to beg the Lord for guidance because with the report was that the army was much larger than the Israel, the army of Judah. And as a result, they knew that they would not be able to defeat them in their own strength. And so here's what Jehoshaphat did when he didn't know what to do. In fact, he says, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. So he made the decision to seek the Lord for guidance. So the first thing he did was to remember God in the midst of that uh, crisis. And he began to worship God as well. He, he chose to go to God first, but he also chose to remind himself and the people of Judah who God was. He, in essence, reviewed who God was, the, their history of God's protection, God's uh, guidance of them as a nation, and pointed them to those uh, points in history where God had been there for them and come through for them. And in fact, uh, we have obviously a, a great opportunity to do the same and remind ourselves of how God has helped us in our lives. Also look at scripture to see how God has helped other people in the past as well. And that may be helpful for us to remember in those moments when we don't know what to do, remember what God has already done for us. Remember the promises he has made us. And then Jehoshaphat brought the people of Judah together and uh, met there in Jerusalem and had prayer as, as a, uh, a, a community. He called them to also fast as they prayed. So they set aside uh, uh, eating for a time and called upon God. It, in essence, reminded them of how serious the situation was and their help was in God alone. So they took time to pray to God and also pointed out the promises God had made that if the people would come together and call upon God, repent of their wicked ways and, and turn to him for help, that he would hear from heaven and, and, re, and forgive their sins and heal their land and protect them even from their foreign enemies. And so uh, they second thing they did not only was remember God, but also pray to God. And they gave those problems to the Lord. They looked to God for his help, and they said, our eyes are upon you. They fasted and prayed and remembered the words that God had told them in the prophets of the past. So we would be remembering scripture. While they waited then for God to answer, they trusted God, prayed to God. Uh, all that they could do was ask God for, God for help and uh, focus completely on seeking him. And when they did that, the Lord did, did provide an answer and they received that answer with gratitude. And in fact, the, uh, the answer was that the Lord would be with them, the Lord would fight for them, and that the battle was the Lord's and not theirs. And so the instructions were for them to march out against the oncoming enemy, but a reminder that they didn't need to do anything to fight the enemy. All they needed to do was stand still and see the salvation that the Lord was going to provide for them. Watch the Lord bring them victory. So the third thing they did was to obey what God told them. Uh, they did that with faith. So whatever God told them to do, they chose that they were going to do that. 
So they went where God told them to go. They stood and watched and saw that God had already won the victory for them. Now, this probably seems to be a risky move because the Lord told them to uh, form the army and head toward the enemy, which was bigger than they were, and there was no hope that they would be able to defeat them. But they went anyway because they trusted when the Lord said, the battle is mine, not yours, that the battle is the Lord's, that that was actually true. They was risky and it challenged their faith, but they acted in faith and went to where God told them to go. And they were able to then to look out over the enemy army. And in fact, when they got there, they saw that the enemy army had already been defeated. The Lord had caused the uh, armies of the different nations that were allied together to come against uh, Judah to actually begin fighting each other. And so that enemy uh, was divided and defeated uh, within itself. And Israel, the people of Israel, uh, the people of Judah didn't have to raise, raise a hand in battle. So they listened to the Lord, obeyed him, and the victory came. So uh, not only did they uh, go to God first, they began to pray. They also obeyed what God told them to do. The last thing they did was then just to rejoice and praise God. They praised God for his gift of deliverance. They praised him even before they saw it, actually. See, what King Jehoshaphat did was he gathered together the army, and as they get ready to march to the place to meet the enemy and stand to see the victory, they, he appointed musicians to lead the army. So in the front of the army were singers and musicians, uh, people playing instruments, people singing. And what were they singing? They were singing praise to God. So that would be like uh, sending out uh, your army with the, uh, the worship team leading the battle. They went into battle rejoicing that God was God, that God was uh, there for them, and that he had promised to bring them the victory. So what do we do when we don't know what to do? If we follow the example of King Jehoshaphat and the people of Judah, we would first of all remember who God is and turn to him first. Don't we sometimes look to ourselves first rather than to God? And so the call is for us to remember God first. When we don't know what to do, turn to him. Make a decision to turn to him for help. That's what Jehoshaphat did. Second thing was to make a ded dedication of themselves to prayer. In fact, even prayer and fasting. I don't know about you, but when I decide to, to stop eating for a while, you know something serious is going on. And certainly they took it seriously and asked God sincerely and seriously for his help. And then third thing was to obey what God told them to do. When they listened to God's word, when they remembered what God had told them through the prophets of the past, and for us, when we read scripture and remember what God has already told us to do, we need to be obedient. So if there's anything we know we're not doing that God told us to do, or if there are things we're doing that God's told us not to do, we need to fix those things in our lives, to be obedient to God in everything and every way that we know how. And listen for the Holy Spirit's guidance in that. As you read scripture, the Holy Spirit will speak to you and we can be obedient. And then the fourth thing, rejoice that God will bring us the victory. Not only rejoicing after the victory comes, but rejoice before the victory comes. We we rejoice in faith that God has heard our prayers and that God will answer. In fact, uh, my dad used to say, uh, the, the fo old folks around the church, if they couldn't pray their way through an obstacle, a problem, they would praise their way through. Maybe that's a good uh, a challenge for us. Not only pray and trust God for victory, but praise the Lord that he is already working to bring, out, bring us the answer and bring us the victory. Well, what do we do when we don't know what to do? Go to God, pray to him, obey what he says, and then rejoice as he brings us the victory. Would you pray with me as we prepare our hearts uh, to live out this lesson as we face down fear in our lives? Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for the fact that when we call upon you, you have promised that you will hear us, you will answer us. So, Lord, in those times when we don't know what to do, thank you that we can turn to you and look to you for your grace and help. So we give you praise, Lord, and thank you that you are faithful, that you indeed will hear us and answer our prayers. 
So when we don't know what to do, Lord, we know who to whom we should turn. And Lord, we choose to turn to you. We thank you for your grace and help in Christ's name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Remember, each evening this week at 7 o'clock, we'll be posting on Facebook, and we invite you to join us. God bless you. Thank you for being with us.